Hi. Welcome to Tai Chi for Seniors. This is a class in self-healing through movement created specifically with seniors in mind. Our format was designed to address the particular needs of people over 60. For instance, there are exercises for high blood pressure, for strengthening the immune system, and there's even one for creating a hormonal balance. There are also massage and acupressure techniques for arthritis, headaches, and insomnia. With an emphasis on deep breathing and relaxation, our warm-ups pretty well cover the entire gamut of age-related disorders. In addition, there are only 10 easy moves to remember in our five-minute Tai Chi style. It seems like there are more because everything we do on the right is repeated on the left. Since this is Qigong Tai Chi, the moves are fun and easier to do than most other classes that are based on martial application or fighting. Our emphasis in Qigong Tai Chi is on healing and regeneration and is based on the principles of acupuncture. So let us begin the warm-ups with a move we call the washing machine. This move is a general loosener upper, and like all Tai Chi moves, it originates in the feet, issues through the waist, and expresses itself in the arms. The upper torso remains as relaxed as possible. This move squeezes and stretches your internal organs and moves the energy into your arms. As you loosen up, I would like to take this opportunity to say that this class is divided into four sections. The first is loosening of the joints. The second are special health-related exercises. The third is self-massage and acupressure. And the fourth is the five-minute Tai Chi style itself. I also want to mention that in this class, we don't believe in the saying, no pain, no gain. We believe in no brain, no gain. So just use your head and don't overdo anything. Now I want to point out three things that differentiate Eastern exercise from Western. Number one, the Chinese emphasize that all exercises are done as relaxed as possible. Number two, your mind should be focused on what you are doing at all times. And number three, all breathing is deep diaphragmatical breathing, which we'll be practicing in a few moments. The next warm up is called pushing up the sky. Exhale when your hand pushes up and inhale when it comes down. It complements the first move because it also squeezes and stretches your organs, but now in an up and down direction. We always say, don't start your day without freshly squeezed organs. Now we go to the head and neck area and then slowly work our way down the body, loosening up all the joints. The first move is called the turtle. And while it works the vertebrae of the neck, it also squeezes and stretches the thyroid. You inhale as the chin goes up and exhale as it goes down. The turtle sinks into his shell. Be sure to keep the thyroid stimulated because in addition to all the physical problems an underactive thyroid can cause, it can also cause severe depression in some seniors. Now we work on the neck and thyroid from side to side. Inhale on each side and exhale when the head relaxes in the middle. Also note how the hands go to the opposite side of the body from the head. This gives a greater squeeze to the thyroid. Now let's take a moment to stimulate the thymus gland. It's located right behind the breastbone. The Chinese regard this gland as the youth gland and feel that if you can regenerate it, you can actually retard the aging process. So thump that thymus and let's see what happens. Now let's work on the shoulders with a move called holding up the sky. Inhale up, exhale down, rotate left, rotate right, and bend down, but not too far. This move is called the butterfly. You inhale when the hands come up, exhale when they go down behind you. And these moves are just like swimming. This one is like swimming the backstroke. Inhale up in front, exhale down the back. This is like doing the crawl and stretch out as far as you can and stretch your spine. Now we finish by inhaling when the hands go to the back and exhaling when they are in front. Be sure to turn your head and watch the hand in the back. Keep in mind I'm doing the minimum number of moves in each posture 
And if you have an area that needs extra work, don't hesitate to spend more time on it. Now loosen up the wrists and be sure to rotate them in both directions. Shake them out good and get the blood into the fingers. Now the next move is for the spine and to do them we need to sit down. These moves that you get to sit down seem to be everybody's favorites I've noticed. Exhale down and try to get your chin to your knees as you rotate around. Inhale up and really open up your chest as you sit upright. Reverse directions after three times and go slowly so you don't get dizzy. All right, everybody up now while we work on the lower spine and hips. This time your head doesn't move, only the lower part moves. Rotate in both directions on this move also. Hey, it looks pretty good. If you don't become Tai Chi masters, you can always become belly dancers. Now we go down to the knees. They travel together for a while in both directions. Then they separate into a move I call the Charleston. And the right knee goes both clockwise and counterclockwise. We finish the series by loosening the ankles. Make as large a circle with your heel as possible and rotate both feet in both directions. Now we get to sit down again. Shake out your ankles just like you did your wrists. The Chinese consider the ankles and wrists as the gates to the body so they should be kept open and as loose as possible. They feel a person can actually exchange energy with the earth through their feet and hands, so there's a lot of emphasis on keeping these gates open. Now we come to the section of special exercises. These have been selected as being the most beneficial and effective exercises a senior can do. They are deep breathing, stimulation of the pituitary, and the arm and leg swings. We begin with deep breathing. The value of breathing deep can't be overemphasized. Seniors are notorious shallow breathers. We all come into this world doing deep diaphragmatical breathing, but over the years, the breath gets shallower and shallower. We must reverse that tendency, and I not only want you to breathe deeply while doing Tai Chi, I want you to do it all the time. It's done by imagining a balloon in your lower abdomen, and when you inhale, the balloon goes out. When you exhale, your abdomen goes in. This is easier to do on your back, so practice it at night. Deep breathing gives you more oxygen and energy. It massages your intestines. It lowers your metabolic rate. And it actually has a very profound calming effect on you, both physically and psychologically. So practice every day until you breathe this way all the time. Next, we stimulate the pituitary, which is located in the exact center of the brain. This move is called the elephant raises its trunk. And according to the Chinese, when you raise your arms and direct your gaze upward, your energy goes to your head, which is exactly what we want it to do. On the third move, when both hands go up, you hold your breath for three seconds and focus your mind on your pituitary. This move requires developing sensitivity to what is going on inside your body, and that's a great skill to have. As you do this, feel the energy going up into your spine, into your head, and feel a slight increase of pressure inside your skull. Then focus it into the center of your brain. The pituitary is considered the master gland of the body, 
And if it is regularly stimulated, there's a greater chance of maintaining a hormonal balance. Now we change our focus from the center of our brain to the center of our chest. This is one of the few exercises we don't coordinate with the breath. Only push back, never lift up in the front and let your arms swing as freely as possible and breathe deeply. It should almost be effortless and this could possibly be the best singular exercise a senior can do. This exercise is mostly used for breathing difficulties, such as bronchitis, emphysema, and so forth. But we've discovered that it has also been known to lower blood pressure. It's good for arthritis of the hands, bursitis of the shoulders, and so forth. Feel your chest being pulled open, the blood going into your fingers, your shoulders raising and lowering. I want you to do this one at least 15 minutes a day, and you can combine it with walking if you want. Be consistent with it. We've gotten a lot of good results with this one. Next, we do the leg swing. And note that it is done on an angle. The swinging foot goes over the stationary one, and this creates a squeeze in the groin, which is intentional, because many of your lymph nodes are in the groin, and by stimulating them, you're stimulating your immune system to some extent. And in this day and age, our immune systems need all the help they can get. This exercise is also good for leg circulation and for the hips. While holding onto the chair, see if you're more comfortable swinging the inside or your outside leg. Now we go to massage and the acupressure section of the class. The first thing we have to do is to get some energy into our hands. We all have some healing ability to some extent. But for most people, it goes to waste because they never utilize it or develop it. Now, palm your eyes and feel the heat and the pressure from your hands relaxing your facial muscles. A lot of people have no idea how much tension they carry in their face. This exercise is not only good for relaxing your face, it can sometimes heal your eyes. So if you have any kind of eye trouble, Prolong this exercise and see if it can help the problem. Restimulate your hands every moment or so to keep the tingle going. For what is life without a little tingle? Now massage the base of your nose and under your eyes. I want you to know that we are not only stimulating the nose, there are important acupressure points in this area that relate to the large intestines and stomach and in a very real way, we are indirectly stimulating them when we do our nose. And to massage your eyes and forehead, use your thumb and index finger to pinch your eyebrows from the inside corner to the outside. Your thumb relaxes your eye muscles and your index finger relaxes your forehead muscles. Now, work on your temple muscles by slowly circulating your fingers back towards your ears. Then, work on your ears. Remember, every part of your body is represented on your ears, so do a thorough job. The back of the ear relates to the spine. The inner ear relates to all your internal organs. And then the earlobe, pulling down on that, is like stimulating the head. Now don't press on your ears like this if you have a hearing aid in. This exercise regulates the pressure in the inner ear and can sometimes even cure ringing in the ears. We finish the face by stimulating the mouth, and that is done by using your own tongue. Roll it around three times to the left, three times to the right. Then bite your teeth quickly together 36 times. First, nine times in the front, then nine times on the right. Then just bite the four back molars together gently and quickly, and then nine times on the left. Then swallow down. The only time you click your teeth together is when you're eating, and scientists have found that when the teeth click together, it intensifies peristalsis, or the wave-like motion in the intestines. So in reality, you're actually stimulating your entire digestive system by doing this seemingly simple exercise. Now we go to the back of the head. The point we work on is where the spine disappears into the skull. Tap it with your middle fingers. This is called beating the drum, and this point is called the jade pillow point. This stimulates your whole neural system and is good for memory. 
Actually, it's supposed to make you smarter. So keep tapping until you feel smarter. After that, stimulate the entire cranium. Now, there are many important points on the top of the head, so be very thorough with this one. And don't forget, these warm-ups are based on the principles of acupuncture, which means there's a lot more to them than meets the eye. We finish the head by gently pressing on the eight cranial bones in order to keep them flexible. Now, press your head back against your hands while looking up and inhaling. Then lower your head and exhale. This helps to strengthen your neck muscles also. Now, we massage the neck and shoulders in hopes of softening them. Always massage them in this direction and think of those tight muscles as like ice cubes melting into water and the water changing to steam. And you direct the steam down the inside of the arm to your palm. This is the direction that the energy naturally flows according to the principles of acupuncture. So if you have a problem with your shoulders, you massage it this way. Elbow is done this way and so forth. Now, there are a couple of acupuncture points in the arm I'd like to go into because they're so useful. The first one can be found at the end of the crease at the elbow. This is sometimes called the antibiotic point because it's so effective against infection in the body. It also influences your immune system, so keep it well stimulated. The other point is called the valley point because it is located in the soft flesh between the thumb and the index finger. This point is good for headaches, stress, tension, anger, anything where there's too much energy in the head. And this is probably the most used point in all of acupuncture. And now we continue down the body by massaging the abdomen. This direction is for constipation. It follows the natural direction of the large intestine. And this direction is for diarrhea. And don't confuse the two, or you wish you hadn't. Even chronic cases have been known to be helped with this massage. And if you press really hard and long enough, it can even flatten your stomachs. And knowing you all, that's what I need to say to get you to really do this one. Now, for lower back pain, rub vigorously up and down and heat up those muscles, and then just leave your hands there. It's always best to focus your mind on what you're trying to heal because it enhances the healing process. But many students have found that if they just leave their hands there for a long period of time, like when they're watching TV or something, their backs still feel better. Remember, your hands are better than hot pads because they have an innate healing power in them. So let's use them. In massaging your legs, the natural flow is down the outside and up the inside. It's just the opposite of the arms. If you have a sore hip or knee, then massage them in this way only. It's always best to use both hands together because of the polarity that develops between them. The hand on the outside goes down only, the hand on the inside comes up only. If you have swollen ankles or feet, do them like this, down the outside and up the inside. Now there's a really useful point on the legs I want you to know about. It's called Tsutsan Li. It means three inches below the knee. Unfortunately, it means three Chinese inches, and who knows what that means. At any rate, below and to the outside of your knee, there's a big soft spot. That isn't it. But just below that, there's a bone. So you go over that bone and find a very minute depression right next to the center bone. That's it. And this point is used for any problem related to the stomach or intestines. You know, for instance, constipation or an upset stomach or an acid stomach, something like that. In this segment, we would like to demonstrate the entire four-minute style without interruption. And today, I brought along two friends, Billy and Keo. And by the way, Billy just turned 92, so I don't want to hear any of you saying you can't learn this, that you're too old. So now we'll demonstrate the entire style from beginning to end without stopping. You ready, ladies? Okay. 
Hands touch the earth. And here we go. Thank you, ladies. I'll be calling upon you again soon. For those of you who told me you had trouble following my movements when I faced the camera, I will now demonstrate the entire form from the back.
Now for the hard part, learning the moves. In this segment, I'll go over every move step by step, even including the most common mistakes seniors make when they're trying to learn this style. And before we even make a move, there are things you have to keep in mind. The initial posture. It's, it's done by having the feet shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, hind end tucked in, head over the body, chin in, tip of your tongue touching the roof of the mouth. And all breathing is deep diaphragmatical breathing, like I mentioned in the other segment, like this. Hands touching the earth. So, before you even start, get yourself rooted, lower your center of gravity, and breathe deep. Calm yourself down, quiet your mind. Feel like your feet are growing roots into the ground, like a, a tree a thousand years old that's been standing there. The hands also are in touch with the ground. All that is necessary before you even move. Now, the idea behind the uh, hind end being tucked in, and by that I mean the coccyx goes down like that, straightening the back of the spine. And the chin coming in is, is because the back of the head is, is as if suspended by a string like this, pulling up. So what I'm doing, in effect, is, is lengthening the spine. The top of the spine is going up, and the bottom is going down. That lengthens the spine, and that's what we're trying to do here. Because for most people, they walk around like this, sway back, hind end stuck out, chicken neck sticking out, and they're walking around like this, and they wonder why they have back problems and neck problems. It's their posture, and we want to eliminate that before we even start. So sink down, get rooted, quiet your mind, deep breathing, and the first move, called the gathering and the storing, starts with the hands floating up. Inhale, and the hands float down. Exhale. Inhale up, exhale down. Now on this move, if you watch from the side, you'll see that I'm creating a circle. Now that's how it's done physically. What's happening mentally is, is that you are, uh, you are gathering energy from your environment. So when you breathe in, uh, don't just breathe through the nose, breathe up through the feet, breathe in through your hands, breathe through every cell in your body, become like a human sponge. So that when you breathe in, just kind of absorb all the energy around you. Exhale down. And that's the first movement. This first movement contains the essence of the entire form. So if you don't learn anything else but this, you've got the essence of Tai Chi, which is gathering energy and storing it in your body. Particularly this style of Tai Chi, called Qigong Tai Chi. Other styles are more interested in the martial, martial aspect of fighting, but this one was designed by the medical men of China. And it's designed strictly for healing and gathering energy. Okay. Now that's the first move. The most common mistakes on the first move are that when people raise their hands, they raise their shoulders. It's real tense. The shoulders don't move, the hands just float up like they're on little pink clouds. So leave your shoulders out of it. The other, the other example of tension is their elbows come up like this. That's tense. The elbows are always pointed down in almost every move. That's relaxed. And the final thing they do is the tail wags the dog. They'll, they'll, arms will come up and then their body will come up, then their hands go down and their body goes down. It's quite the opposite. The body starts up, initiating the move, and then the hands follow. The body and waist initiate the move, and the hands follow. Okay, that's called the gathering and the storing, and that's the first move. Now the second move is done by shifting your weight like this. And in this position, you move as a unit, as you do in all moves. In other words, you don't twist like this. Your whole body turns at one time like that. And so you turn like this, 
and you form a ball of energy over the right knee. And then you step out 45 degrees with the left foot on the heel, and you squeeze that ball down to where you can almost feel the energy between your hands. Not almost, I hope sometime you do feel it. So that's the, the second move. After you do the gathering and the storing, you turn to the right, shift your weight to the right foot, and create this ball of energy over the knee. Step out 45 degrees and create the ball smaller. Squeeze it down. Okay. Now the mistakes done on this, the elbow comes up like this. A lot of tension. So keep the elbow down, form a very relaxed ball, step out 45 degrees on the heel. That was an inhale. This is an exhale to here. Now the next move is a spiral up the spine, over the head, and down the front, like that. So you're carrying the ball around, rolling it up your spine, over the top of your head, and down the front. Breathing in, facing one way, and breathing out, facing the other. It's a beautiful spiral. A spiral is nature's way of creating power. And there it is. Now, the mistakes most commonly made on this are the people will lean back, like this, and they'll lean forward. And some people's hands will come up real high over their heads like this. And then they'll lean down like this. Keep the elbows down and just spiral with your body. This move, like all the other moves, starts in the feet, finds its direction through the waist, and its expression in the hand. So you see, the very first move is I'm pushing off the back foot like that, stepping in, and then using the waist to turn with and then facing this way and down. You are literally bringing energy up your spine into your brain and down the front of your body. And now the third move, you step out like this and the hands form a ball. Now the important aspect of this move is the body posture. This is called the bow, the B-O-W. This is fundamental to all of Tai Chi and I'll show it to you forward. The critical thing about the bow is that there is space between the feet, the distance of the shoulders. So when you come out like that, you look like this. It's called the bow because this looks like the curved wood, the straight string, and the hands look like the arrow. But the most common mistake people make in this move is that they step directly forward, putting one foot in front of the other, and there's no real stability. So the way to check yourself, no matter what position you're doing, is to draw your front foot back and see if it hits the back foot. If it does, you're not in the bow. What is the ideal position is when you draw your front foot back and you are in the opening position, which is feet shoulder width apart. So remember that about the bow. Then you hold the ball. This is called grasping the bird's tail. You hold the ball down like that as you exhale. And you come up the back, still holding the ball. You press around this way. You roll back and you push with both hands. Now the feet don't even move, so you don't have to worry about that. The most common mistakes on this one are uh, people don't really let their hands drop. This is a circle, like every other move we do. <clears throat> There's a circle effect. Every move we do in this style is a circle. So let the hands drop. Come around. Here again, the elbow comes up. Keep it down. Press the ball forward. This is an exhale. Inhale back. Exhale forward. When you start the move, the hands are sideways. You have just brought the energy down the body into your belly, and then you step out, and you bring the energy out, out in the arms into the fingertips, and you hold it. And as you go down this way, your hands are rotating around the, the circumference of the ball. It's like feeling your own energy from different angles. And then you exhale down this way, and you inhale up the back, and exhale as you press forward with the ball. Inhale back, exhale push. The next move is called sun and moon hands and it's done like this. It's a transition move because everything we did on the right, we're going to do on the left. So we have to get ourselves over there. Now, you start the move by exhaling out, holding the ball and you step back with the left foot, transferring your weight onto that foot and you hold the ball as it goes up, around, and down. And then it comes up the spine, just like it did on the other side. Now, 
as you're transferring your weight, make sure it's at least 80% onto this foot because that's one of the big mistakes people make is they don't really transfer their weight far enough. And in Tai Chi, they always say the weight is an 80% on one foot, 20 on the other, and then you reverse it, 80 here, 20 there. It's never in the center, just going from one side to the other. So when you step back, transfer your weight. And as you do that, it frees up the right toe. Because if you think of your hands as the sun and the moon coming up in the east and going down in the west, think of the right toe as a telescope following the moon, sun and moon around like that. So you see I'm moving as a unit. Back to the same theme that you move as a unit, no individual parts, like that. See how that works? Okay. So you're holding the ball up like this, inhaling, and you exhale down like this. Then you inhale, bring the ball up the spine, into the head, down the front of the body, and into the belly, just as before. Step out, glide your weight out onto the left foot, and you've got the ball once again. Now, this is simply a mirror image of what you did there, so I don't need to spend a lot of explanation on it. You've got the ball, you're feeling the circumference from, uh, from a different uh, perspective as you roll down like this. You're exhaling down, inhaling up the back, still holding the ball, exhaling forward like that. Inhale back, the ball expands slightly, and then you contract the ball as you push forward. And now we're at the same spot we were when we started Sun and Moon Hands, and you need to do the same transition once again. Only this time the right foot steps back, the weight shifts completely to the right foot, freeing the left toe. It follows the hands as you go around and down. So if you look closely, I don't really move my hands. I'm just kind of pushing out and the body turning itself makes the hands go around like that. All they do is drop. And as they drop, they're still holding the ball. And this time you hold the ball and it comes up like this. And it's as if you stuff the ball into this hand. And this is called uh, white stork opens his wings, like that. The crane, the white crane opens his wings. And this move uh, takes special consideration because it's the first time in the form that the hands were not together. Did you notice that we were always playing with the ball, feeling your own internal energy between your hands and so forth? And this is the first time in the series that, that the hands separate and they go their separate ways. And it's because we want to develop the energy in one hand. And then and later on, we'll do it in the other hand. We're always balancing. So the crane opening his wings is, is started by bringing the ball up like this and having the energy going into this hand and going up like that. If you notice, the fingers all congeal around the thumb and it looks very much like a crane or a swan, the head of a crane or a swan. And what's happening is that you, you, the fingers congeal around the thumb and you crook the wrist like this and pull in like that. It's kind of like uh, stifling uh, the energy in this hand so that it, it doesn't get out because on, in this move, we will slowly transfer the energy from this arm through the body and out into the other hand. And that's how this move actually happens. Now here's what happens. You step wide with the right foot, transfer your weight as you exhale out, inhale back, and exhale push. It's called the crane opens his wing. And, uh, the big mistakes people make on this move is that they don't step wide. They just step out like this. And when they turn into the new direction, their one foot is in front of the other. And it's not the, uh, the bow that I explained before. What you have to do is step wider than you think you do. And then exhale out, inhale back, and push. And when you finish the move, you're in the bow position, which is what we want. OK. Now. In this particular move, uh, people often do what I mentioned before, the tail wags the dog. Now here's what happens. They step out like this and their arms fly out and kind of drag their body behind them. The hand comes back and then the body comes back and the hand goes out and the body goes out. That's the tail wagging the dog. The way it should be done is quite the opposite. You actually step out, step wide, 
you step out and your body shifts. And that's what makes the arms just sweep out like that. It's very graceful when you do it that way. The body goes out and the hands go out. The body comes back and the hands come back. The body goes forward and the hands go forward. And it's called the crane opens his wings. And it's the first time the energy has separated from one hand to the other. And as you push out like that, you imagine the energy coming out the palm of your hand to infinity. And it slowly opens up the channels in the arms individually. And this leads to the next move, which is also a very fundamental move in Tai Chi, called cloud hands. And the way that started, the transition into it, is by the back foot stepping in and you scooping up like this. It's like as if you were gathering water from a stream and splashing yourself in the face, refreshing yourself. You're actually gathering energy from the earth, first with this hand, then with that hand. We're still in the part of the uh, style where the hands are working separately, but now they're gathering separately. All right. The move starts like this. Step in, gather from the earth, splash yourself in the face. Then this hand gathers from the earth, splash yourself in the face, and you're turned facing the way you were when you first started. And if you do that transition correctly, you don't have to worry about, oh, where are my hands? Are they going up or down and going the wrong way? Because if you do the transition correctly, you don't have to even think about your hands. They'll automatically be where they should be. Okay. Exhaling out, step in and inhale, gather. Turn, exhale, inhale. The breathing is such that you're inhaling in the direction that you're moving. We'll soon be moving off in this direction. But for right now, don't worry about your feet. We'll discuss that later. Okay. Um, right now, I want you to get the, the total move correctly because it looks like my arms are waving independently, and here again, they're not. It's the uh, waist turning that makes them look. Watch, I'm not even moving my hands. They're just going with the body. All they do is raise and lower, but they don't move in the middle. Turn your waist, shift your weight from one foot to the other. So just stand there and practice this now for a while until you get it. In addition to the importance of moving from the waist, there are several other aspects of this move you should consider. And the other is the evenness of the arm speed. Many people uh, will drop the hands. They'll go slow across the top and drop their hands real fast. They'll go slow and then drop their hands. Concentrate on um, having the hands the same speed. Now this move called cloud hands is uh, done by watching your palm go by and then the wrist rotate and you see the back of the hand. Then you watch this palm as it goes by the face and down. And you just keep doing it. Your eyes are focused on your hands. And keep the hand speed even. What often happens also is that the one hand will stop. As you're concentrating on one hand, this hand will just stop dead in its tracks, and then it'll miss its cue to, to be there on time. So although you're watching one hand, you're always aware of the other hand constantly moving. All right? Then the last thing to consider is the head. Many people, they'll start going like this. There again, tail wagging the dog. The head will lead and pull the body around, whereas the head simply goes along for the ride. It's turning right and left, but only because the waist is turning right and left. And if you keep all those things in mind, your cloud hands should be smooth and easy. Remember, you inhale to the right, exhale to the left. And very relaxing. Now let's discuss the feet for a moment. The feet are parallel when you start this move, and they remain parallel as you step, like this. And when you step in, the left foot never gets close to the other. It's the basic beginning position. So you kind of reach out with the right foot and just go back to the basic stance. So I'll go clear back to the uh, transition, show you all three, and then we'll go on to the next move. The move came from single whip, and notice how out and relax this uh, hand is. Too many people hold it in tight like this. Relax it out. So you're exhaling. You inhale as you scoop up. Exhale as the right hand swings around and you're facing to the left. Inhale to the right. Exhale to the left. That's considered the first one. Here's the second one. 
and here's the third one. And all this leads into the next move called repulse the monkey. The dynamics of this move come off that last step. Instead of stepping in normally like this, you step out at 45 degrees. The hands capture the ball once again, and it comes up over the left shoulder like this. You step back with the right foot, and you roll the ball down the right arm out into infinity. And you step back with the left foot, roll it down the left arm out into infinity. And you do that four times. Now, the most common errors on this are that uh, people move uh, their arms without moving their body. Nothing happens in this move until the leg steps back. Actually, the waist turns, turning the leg and the hands like that. Notice the backhand comes around, the elbow stays down, the backhand comes by the ear and out. And you're pulling with the left hand and pushing with the right. So remember, Nothing happens until the waist turns and the step happens. That's what brings the hands forward. Okay. Now, I'll face the camera because I want you to see the feet positions. Too many people, when they step back, they step directly behind the other foot. And here, once again, there's no stability. When you step back, you have to step to the side like this and shift your weight over that foot. Front foot straightens out. And then when you step back, you shift your weight to the side, your hind end back over that heel, and so forth. So you see, it's like a sailboat tacking against the wind, but in, yet you continue in a straight line yourself. All right, that's the dynamics of the move. Now I'll do it once more so you can watch it. You inhale, up over the shoulder, waist turns to the right, you step back, and exhale down like this. Inhale up, step back slowly, exhale down. Inhale, exhale, inhale. And on this last move, it's very similar to the other move, but instead of rolling the ball out to infinity, you roll the ball to the left hand and it kind of captures it. And you hold it and it swings around like this and up over your shoulder. And you sink down, you bend your knees as your whole body sinks down. Now, the energy's gone inside your body. You are mentally visualizing this, the energy inside the body. And you inhale up, you pull it up through the body and right out the top of the head like that. So it's an inhale up to the heart, inhale up, and then an exhale as the hands twist like that. And you push straight out. The angle of the body is the same as the leg. Um, and your head is lined up with the body and the leg. Now, a lot of people, when they come up like this, They'll, their body will be at one angle and their leg on another and their head down like this and their hands over like this. Everything must line up in this move. You're inhaling up and you lean like this and the hands go straight out so that your leg, body, and head are in a straight line. And the arms are forming a nice circle with the fingers pointing to each other, palm up. Now that's half the move. The other half is the hands come around this way, still holding the ball down around, it's an exhale down, inhale up over the shoulder, step in if you want for stability and then back out or just leave the foot out there, it doesn't matter. And you exhale down and now you inhale up to the heart, exhale out this way, everything lined up. And a lot of people have the elbow down like this, it's up like that. When you finish that, the hands drop Step in for stability if you want, and it, now we do the crane on this side. This is the one where the energy is contained in the one hand. The other hand separates. You step wide, exhale out, inhale back, exhale push. Nothing different here. It's a, it's a mirror image of the move we did on the other side. Stay relaxed, stay rooted, and you're in the fundamental bow position once again. This time it's the right foot that steps in and the right hand scoops up first as you inhale. Exhale to the right. Inhale to the left. And this happens three times. Feet stepping parallel, not quite together. It's very rooted. The knees are bent, hind end tucked in. Tongue still touching the roof of the mouth. And on the final one, the right foot steps out at 45. The ball comes around and up over the right shoulder. And you go back into the repulse the monkey on this side. Exhale out. Inhale as the hands come up. The heel and the hands come up together like that. 
correspondence between the feet and the hands. Step back. Exhale. Inhale as you open up. There's a sense of expansion, and then there's a sense of contracting the chest as the elbows kind of squeeze in. Inhale up, exhale back. The right hand rolls over and pulls as the left hand goes by the ear and rolls the ball down the arm like that, and so forth. Now, on the last repulse, the monkey, which is on this side, and you're right back to the spot where you began, you hold the ball once again around to here, and then you start gathering from the earth, first with the right hand, then the left hand, into the navel. So it's very low like this. Get as low as you can while you're gathering from the earth into the navel, one hand each. And then you come up a little higher, and now the hands are gathering into the heart like this, bringing the energy up higher into the heart. Then they both come around together like this. You kind of crouch just slightly for it, kind of an anticipation of the next move, which is taking the energy from the center of the body right out the top of the head like that. This is the grand finale out the top of the head. And you exhale down as you sink down once more, and you gather one final time from the earth. You breathe in, gather from the earth, pack it inside the body, and sink down. At the end of every class, we have a segment called Quiet Standing. This is a very important aspect of Tai Chi, and it's done like this. The original stance is uh, the same as at the beginning of Tai Chi. Feet parallel, shoulder width apart, knees slightly bent, hind end tucked in, head over the body, chin in, tongue touching the roof of the mouth. But this time, the hands come out from the heart. And it's called holding the big jug. Now, in this move, uh, which is not really a move, it's, it's uh, perfectly still uh, and coordinated with the breathing, it's mostly mental. And as you're breathing, when you inhale, you imagine energy going up your spine into your brain, nourishing, stimulating your brain, and then draining down through your tongue on the exhale and nourishing your internal organs, like that. So for three minutes minimum, and hopefully more, uh, I like my students to stand this way and focus their eyes on their fingertips, and whenever they inhale, imagine, and breathe deep, of course. This is just the more deep breathing as before. Whenever you inhale, you imagine energy going up the spine into your brain, and when you exhale, it goes down the front. This is called the microcosmic orbit. That looks good. Now, what happens is, as the energy goes up the, uh, called the Dumai and the Renmai channel, uh, it builds up, and the excess goes out into the arms, and it goes into the hands. Now, this is the really exciting part about the, the quiet standing because it's often students' first uh, opportunity to experience their own internal energy. What happens is the fingers will start tingling or they'll, they'll heat up. They even turn red in some cases because of the energy building up. And then this talk of internal energy is not just imagination. It becomes a reality for most people. So spend a, a few minutes every day doing this quiet standing and start feeling your own energy. Get sensitive to it. Start uh, noticing where it is and where it's going, where it's deficient, where it's too abundant, and so forth. This is the real benefit of doing this. That concludes Tai Chi for seniors. I want you to practice every day because it has a cumulative effect. Each day, you have more and more energy and your health improves. You can even retard the aging process. Or look at me. I'll be 50 years old this year. And I get younger every day. As a matter of fact, I can't wait to get up in the morning to see how much younger I got during the night. No, oh, really. But this is the most comprehensive self-healing system we have found. So use it and benefit from it. And if you'd like to arrange a weekend seminar, call me at 1-800-497-4244, and I'll come out to your center and correct your postures, show you some other self-healing methods, and in general, we just have some fun. In the meantime, remember one thing above all else. Be realistic. Expect a miracle. And thank you for watching.